The committee will come to order. The chairman notes the presence of a quorum, which under committee rule 3E is two members. The subcommittee on energy and mineral resources is meeting today to hear testimony on an oversight hearing entitled the science behind discovery, seismic exploration and the future of the Atlantic outer continental shelf. Under committee rule 4F, opening statements are limited to the chairman and ranking member of the subcommittee. However, I ask unanimous consent to include any other members opening statements in the hearing record if submitted to the clerk by close of business today. Hearing no objection, so ordered. I also ask unanimous consent that Representative Pallone be allowed to participate in today's hearing at such time as he may uh, be able to be here. Hearing no objection, no objection, so ordered. I now recognize myself for five minutes. As we begin today's hearing, I wanted to make sure that everyone was clear about the focus of this hearing, particularly in light of recent discussions related to crude oil exports. While America is in the beginning of a new energy renaissance, this committee has continued to focus on the fact that this resurgent has taken place primarily on state and private lands. Meanwhile, the potential jobs and domestic production from federal land has been stifled by this administration. If America wants to continue to reap the economic rewards of increased oil and natural gas production, we must eliminate the red tape and other barriers that continue to lock up the vast resources of our federal lands and waters. However, the topic of crude oil exports has become an important discussion point, especially in this past week. I think we all need to keep in mind that each day, while the Obama administration continues to hold hostage our domestic resources, America imports nearly 7.5 million barrels of oil from Arab sheiks and Latin dictators. This amounts to nearly $1 billion each day flowing from the pockets of everyday Americans to petrol dictators and enemies of America who fund terrorists around the world. We have a choice. We can stop buying their oil by producing more here at home, something I support, and something, unfortunately, this administration has opposed at almost every step. Let me be clear, I support free trade. I also support American energy independence, and that is a road we are on, but we are still far from our goal. As long as the administration continues to stifle our domestic development on federal lands, our fight to create jobs and open our resources must be the focus of our efforts. As long as America's hard-earned dollars are funding terrorists and petrol dictators, we must fight to open and develop our domestic resources. And that fight is not over. I hope the day comes soon where we should discuss oil exports. But as long as 85% of our outer continental shelf remains closed by this administration, as long as less than 2% of our federal onshore mineral estate is available for leasing, as long as the administration drives out research and development investment on new sources of energy like domestic oil shale, those discussions are premature. Our focus should remain on creating American jobs and producing American resources for American consumers. This hearing today is a central focus of that agenda. A clear understanding of the resources in the Atlantic Ocean will help us know what areas we should develop and what resources America holds in our OCS. However, although the process of developing the Programmatic Environmental Impact Statement, or PEIS, for seismic started in 2009, the Obama administration has dragged its feet. Now, as we start 2014, we are just one year from the start of the development of the 2017 to 22 five-year plan. We are one year from needing the data this PEIS is supposed to help us secure, yet the development is being stifled by the administration. If we hope to see the Atlantic included in the next five-year plan, the administration must move forward immediately and rapidly. In any kind of decision making, we can all agree that decisions, especially those which will greatly impact our nation's future, must be made with the best available data. In the case of the Atlantic OCS, the best available data cannot yet be obtained because we await a final record of decision from the Department of the Interior. Nearly five years ago to the day, January 21, 2009, 
the DOI issued the initial notice of intent to prepare the PEIS in order to enable the permitting of seismic activity in the Atlantic. Dr. Cruikshank likely will recall the issuance of this notice as he was with the department at the time. When it takes our Canadian allies to the north only six months to issue a seismic permit, the obvious question remains. Five years and counting, when will the U.S. Atlantic finally see this activity? Five years and counting. I fully expect that some of my colleagues on the minority side will likely decry seismic research because, much like our president, they actually do not wish to see new energy development in the U.S. outer continental shelf outside of the Gulf of Mexico. But I would remind them that today's hearing is focused primarily on sound science and progress. The technology behind seismic surveying has come a long way from the technology employed in the late 70s and early 80s when it was last conducted in the Atlantic. In an increasingly competitive global market where allies like Canada and Mexico have made recent announcements about increasing their offshore oil and gas production, we need to know that the agencies that oversee our OCS operations are doing their jobs efficiently and spending taxpayer dollars wisely. We need to know that our country is maintaining its competitive edge and attracting economic development and the thousands of jobs that come with it. A recent study estimates that offshore energy development in the Atlantic alone could generate 280,000 jobs, $24 billion per year to the economy, and 1.3 million barrels of oil and natural gas production per day. What I hope to find today is that the administration is not standing in the way of permitting advanced and safe technology which is already employed in the Gulf of Mexico and the Canadian Atlantic, to scientifically determine what kinds of resources are contained in the Mid and South Atlantic Outer Continental Shelf planning areas. These are the only areas that the PEIS covers. This information is of fundamental importance as this Congress and this administration makes decisions going forward. I cannot imagine a single person who would choose ignorance over scientific discovery. And I now yield five minutes to the gentleman from New Jersey.